Hi everyone, sorted out another tray full of a few lamps. We start up with, um, I'm still using the uh, fluoroscope, which seemed to turn out not too bad for showing uh, the detail. Now I've got a rather unusual lamp here. Um, look at the base. It is certainly an untypical base. There is writing on it, but it's not very clear what it says. It's obviously a lamp used in the um, stage or photographic or something like that. It's obviously where you need plenty of light it does have this special base. If anyone knows anything about this, please let us know. I'd like to know. Now I put down an extra extra light if I don't knock it down. Um, and it's still having a job bringing it in. Let's turn this one off. Best of both worlds now. Um, There's the info on it. Um, it looks like it's made by Mazda BTH and a few other things mentioned up there. 600 watts, I think that says 80 volt or 50 volt, 600 volt. Anyhow, if anyone knows this lamp or any details about it, I'd be very grateful to find out more about it. Have a look inside. It's a typical projector or stage light lamp which uh, they use. The filament's intact and quite a heavy filament as well. I've, I've never lit it up. It has been used in the past as you can see. It's a bit of dulling at the top there so it was probably burnt in a vertical position it's certainly a weird one to me which makes it even more interesting and the length of that where's well, my hand So that gives you an idea of the size of that lamp. Anyhow, let's go on to the next one. Put it somewhere safe. Come back to something a bit more it's unusual. Um, I know it's a standard lamp, standard 100 volt, 150 lamp by Osram. This will be the English Osram. Unfused lead in wires, it's not fused. Screw base, normal of the time filament arrangement tungsten, single coil, the etch at the top is very very faint but I did make out that it was made by Osram. And the shape, once again looking at the size of it and my hand, it is quite a large lamp for 100 watts. Well, that was the size they were in years gone by. It's just nice it's still working. It's evacuated down the bottom there, not with a pip top, so that came along after the pip top lamps. 
Oh, so that give you an idea of how large the 100 watt bulbs were in the old days. Here we have a single loop, or barely a loop, it's just a, <laughs> just one, well, loop, I suppose, of carbon. No supports to it, don't need it. And there is an etch on the top here. Very, very faint. Um, I don't know whether you can make it out, but I can, and it's a Robertson GEC Limited, 25 volt, 16 CP, which is candle power, made in England. This would have been made at the other uh, factory at Hammersmith, long since gone. It might show up. Don't worry if it doesn't, it's, um, I read out what it says, a well-made lamp, non-pip top, bayonet cap, and one loop of carbon, rather unusual. Now I'll turn off the fluoroscope, don't really need it for this one. There's nothing to see inside. You might see, see my ugly mug on there, I don't know. Um, and it says it's made in Holland, Philips 367. And this is a rectifier. One, two, three, four. It looks like it's using all the pins, so it's probably full wave rectification. And it would have probably been used in a battery charger, a car battery chargers. And I suppose it's, um, well, it's Philips' example of this kind of thing. It's completely silvered over. So all you'll better see on there is my ugly mug and anything else that's going on in the room. 367. That can be checked up on eBay or one of the sites which deal with the old valves. Anyhow, is he interested? and something that was added to the collection. Another little lamp here, pip top. Unfortunately, no name. You can see the insides there. It's buying it. It's a worker. As I say, there's nothing on it to, at least I don't think, think there's anything on it. No, I can't. I've had a good look, can't see anything. That gives you an idea of the size. A nice little carbon filament pip top bulb. An outside frosted, which is unusual today. The frosting is done internally. This is done outside. The, the lamp was probably dipped into hydrofluoric acid which etches glass. So nice and neat little lamp. Next one up we've got it's badly marked I don't know why. This is actually inside when I turn it round. Um, the frosting is outside again. The name, if you can see it on there, I'll turn this on. It 
is Siemens made in England now if you see Siemens written like this with the loop over the two S's then you know it's a one by Siemens Brothers of Woolwich they made quite a few different types of lamps over here and they were brothers the Siemens Brothers originated from Germany the Siemens lamps in Germany were called Osram here the Osram name was an entirely different company then not now it's all un under the German Siemens or the German Osram anyhow it's a carbon filament it's a worker but unfortunately it's very badly stained inside don't know why there's my little bit of information on it. Siemens carbon heater. I've got it down as a carbon heater. UK 240 volts. There's a bayonet cap again. I've got that down as heater, which is possible. They did manufacture electric heaters which used carbon lamps some use the sausage type lamp um, which I've got on a heater in the front room which is American one by GE last lamp of this little batch no details about it at all small lamp I don't even think this is a goer. I think it was added to the collection because of the shape. It's a silver light lamp, bayonet. Not enormously large, but nevertheless quite an interesting one with the bayonet cap. Anyhow, that's all for this box. Um, thanks for watching. Um, as I say, I've been having a good look at YouTube. It's amazing the interest that people have in not just the lamps, the plants, obviously, uh, lifts, which um, when I was young, I was quite interested in them, still am, and people in those days thought I was clean around the bend, calling me Harpic. But I realise now that there's interest in all these things, and it's nice to see. And um, I'd encourage anyone that is interested. Also, trains, there's a lots and lots of interest. I could go on, um, I won't, but I will at times it's something to talk about it's a good interest and I encourage anyone who's interested in that to um, take it up and um, do videos on them I've learnt a lot I must admit been lots of changes from my early days I remember lifts going up like a uh, like bird cages they were all open, I say open, they had lattice work around them, but now that's quite rare. And the underground had wooden escalators. Uh, these were by Otis, or they may have even been way good Otis at, at the time, but there's none of those about now. I think they show one on YouTube, which is very interesting. The ones I remember. They were completely wood, but unfortunately they did cause a, a very nasty fire and, pe and people's lives were lost. Anyhow, once again, thanks for watching. Sorry I'm going on rambling again. I do like talking. And thanks again. Thank you. Any comments obviously make. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.